movement in a you know, co-founder of Particles for Justice, for example. We are just a group of people who came together originally to write a letter, a statement against sexism and particle physics. And it ended up snowballing into something much bigger than you know what we planned for it to be. Much bigger. Yeah, much bigger. And then, you know, a, a year and a half later we found ourselves wanting to respond to all of the anti black violence. Uh, last spring and last summer in, in 2020. And 
we called for a one day strike for black lives in coordination with a group of astronomers who are known as shut down STEM and shut down academia. So it's odd in some sense that physicists would play this role, but I think, you know, at heart, what I have learned in talking to people is that everybody's really curious about cosmology. Everybody's really curious about particle physics. They, they're fascinated by it. They're interested in how stars work. One of the epigraphs of my book is something that my mother said to me at one point when I called her feeling particularly distraught about anti-Black murders that were happening by police and vigilantes. And just to put that in context, your mother is the, the famous civil rights activist and journalist, Margaret Prescott. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that description of her. I wish more people would describe her that way. I am, um, yeah, you know, the Margaret Prescott. Well, it's just a, there's a be, there's a, a beautiful letter at the end of this book. Dear Mama, this is what my freedom dream looks like. Are you happy with that? Yeah. So, and, and I think you know the reason that the book ends with this letter is because it also opens with this epigraph where I'm I'm not going to get the wording exactly right, but she says that people need to know that the universe is bigger than the bad things that are happening to us. And so in some sense, we are telling that story that gives people hope and a sense of connection with a world that is bigger than the terrible things that are happening to us. And a vision of a world where stars are doing their thing and bad things aren't happening to us, and we are looking at the stars and we know things about them, and you know we can quote them, we can write stories about them, and, you know, all of these children who, you know, I'm thinking about Jacob Blake's children who watched a police officer shoot their father, I think, seven times in the back. You know, instead of having to spend the rest of their lives grappling with that memory, and I cannot imagine being a child and, and witnessing something like that. What about a future where something like that never happens, and instead they're spending their childhood, like, you know, learning about, you know, Orion? <laughs> yeah. The numbers matter, and right up the top of your origin story, you acknowledge that you are the 54th Black American woman to earn a PhD from a Department of Physics. As far as you know, you are the first Black woman to hold a tenure-track faculty position in theoretical cosmology. You know, those numbers are important to say out loud. They're vital because we cannot be what we cannot see. And yet you do argue that diversity is a dangerous setup. And many who get labelled as diverse in predominantly white organisations, including my own, feel that, don't they? Yes, I think that this is such an important thing to recognise, which is I am here, I'm in my house in New Hampshire, I'm a professor, I have a book out, I received an award this morning. I'm not just having a good year in, in many ways professionally, but I am leading a good life in many ways, right? It is also the case that the US ICE agency, the Immigration Enforcement Agency, has been kidnapping people off the street in the neighborhood where I grew up. And me winning an award this morning doesn't change that. It doesn't do anything about that. We should celebrate the people who work hard and have success while also understanding that I had opportunities that were afforded to me because I was a good test taker, because I'm light-skinned. I had a family full of teachers. But, but something like me being successful doesn't actually solve the structural problems that become barriers for so many people. They don't solve mass incarceration, as in, in the U.S. In Australia, black people are um, disproportionately incarcerated, are disproportionately face police violence. Black people in Australia are also, you know, surviving under colonialism. When we talk about diversity in, in astronomy, for example, what people really mean is taking, for example, like black people in Australia and teaching them astronomy as it is agreed upon by the international professionalized community, which has its roots in Europe. They're not talking about how can we center traditional Aboriginal knowledge of the sky. And that's not to say there aren't people who are doing that work. One person getting through the door doesn't fix the structure. And then the question is, how do we fix the structure? I think we all have a, a role to play in that. Okay.
That was Chandra Prescott Weinstein, an assistant professor of physics and astronomy and a core faculty member in women's studies at the University of New Hampshire. Her research in theoretical physics focuses on cosmology, neutron stars, and particles beyond the standard model. And apparently, she's a light-skinned black African-American woman. Got to say, I thought she was Jewish. Press God Weinstein. Big nose. Sorry about that. I thought she was Jewish. But as you heard... She's an African-American physicist feminist who also lectures the Swamp Wallabies and Old Men Hillbillies. Wobbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao. Reptilian overflight. Just on sunset. Twin engine turboprop passenger plane Probably Brisbane to Armadale.